Hey guys, it's Zoe. Today I'm going to be talking about some of my favorites from when I was a kid or a young teenager. Generally just some books that I have really happy memories of reading. So yeah, let's just get right into it. The first book I have is Silverwing by Kenneth Opal. I remember reading this book for the first time at the beginning of grade four. I think we read it in class. So I would have been eight years old and at that point I loved books where animals were the main characters. You could give me anything about that and I'd be happy. This story follows a young bat named Shade. He He's the runt of the colony, he gets made fun of by everybody, and during their migration he gets swept out of the group and he has to find his way back to his family. It's the first book in a trilogy. The ones that follow are Sunwing and Firewing. I didn't like the way Firewing ended, but Silverwing and Sunwing are some of my favorite books from when I was a kid. I have such good memories of reading those. When we read those in class it was what I looked forward to every day. I was so excited to go to school because I knew we'd get to read more. Naturally, I went out and I bought them myself so I could finish, but I wanted to reread and get the teacher's perspective and the other kids' perspectives. Chances are I'm probably going to reread this one in 2018 as well, just because I've been in such a nostalgia phase lately, and this is one of those ones that I'm hoping that I will like as much as I did when I was a kid. If not, I have good memories of it. The second book I have is Ella Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine. I read this book after the movie came out, thinking that I was going to love it as much as the movie, but I didn't. I didn't really like this book, but I have good memories of it just because I read it right after I saw the movie and the comparison was always there for me. It's a weird situation because I didn't like the book but I have fond memories of it, if that makes sense to anyone other than me. This story follows a girl named Ella who has been cursed with obedience. She has to follow any direct order that she's given. If she's given a suggestion, she's free to ignore that, but any direct order, she has to follow. It doesn't matter if it's an order that will benefit her or not, she has to follow it. And it is a Cinderella retelling, which might be one of the reasons why I have such fond memories because of my love for retellings. I think I'm gonna have to reread this one again soon too, just so I can remember why I hated it so much. Because looking back, I'm not really remembering. I just remember not liking it as much as the movie, but I think I'm gonna have to read it and watch it again and see how I feel now that I'm a lot older. Oh god, I'm a lot older than I when I read it. Ooh. I think I read this one around the same time. Actually, I don't remember when that movie came out, but I remember being pretty young. I don't remember how old I I was when I read this. I'll figure it out one day. The next book I have is Twitches by H.B. Gilmore and Randy Reisfeld. I recently realized, that's very glary, that's Okay, we're good. I recently realized that I had been pronouncing Randy Reisfeld's name wrong my entire life because I misread it. My whole childhood, I misread it, and now I've been corrected, and now I feel like an idiot, but that's just the way she goes. I have talked about this series in a couple other videos just because I reread it. I'll call you back. I reread it in December, I think. I got a few of the later books. I haven't finished this series, but I remember, I think I read it for the first time. When did this come out? I think this was another book that I read when I was around eight or nine years old and it's just stuck with me. This is the one that I hid in a shoebox in my closet so my mom couldn't find it and unhaul it for me because I had outgrown it. But here we are several years later, a decade and a half later, I don't know, and it's still going strong. This book follows two girls. They are twins and they're witches. Witches. They were separated at birth so they never knew that they had a twin sister or that they were witches. When we meet these two girls at around 13, I think they are, they have these weird powers. The one girl, her friends call it her mojo. The other ones, I don't think they really had a name for it. They just thought they were different and weird. They didn't realize that they were actually witches that came from a long line of witches. This series follows their bleh, this series follows their journey through meeting their family that they never knew about and finding each other and really just discovering themselves. Rereading this, I realize how cheesy it is. Some of the stuff they say is so ridiculous, but I love it because it really reminds me of being a kid and there's nothing wrong with that. I know I'm technically supposed to be an adult, but I look like a kid and I act like a kid and I feel like a kid. So I'm pretty sure I'm still a kid, which means I can reread my favorites without- kid. Oh, Curtis says I am a kid. Well, shit. Looks like I'm gonna be rereading my childhood favorites all over again because I'm still a kid. <sighs> the next book I have is a little bit different and that one is A Break With Charity by Anne Rinaldi. This one, I think, how old was I? I lived with my aunt and uncle. My god, I think I was eight when I read this one too. Well, this was my first introduction to historical fiction. My aunt got me a box set of Anne Rinaldi's books. There were six books in that set, and they were all set in different points in history. This one's set during the Salem Witch Trials, and it follows the girls who were involved in the trials and how it started and how it ended. 
This book is narrated by a girl named Susanna, who is an actual historical figure. She's not one of the main circle of girls involved in the Salem witch trials. Her family were outsiders to begin with. In this story, it follows Susanna as she's trying to be included into this group of girls that were kind of the elite. The leader of this group of girls is Anne Putnam, who was the first girl to accuse somebody else of being a witch, which set off the chain of events that would come to be known as the Salem witch trials. So Susanna's here, she's trying to fit in with the girls and then she realizes exactly what's going on and she's faced with this terrible choice of whether to basically be a whistleblower and let the adults know what's going on and that Anne is really just being malicious and these accusations are entirely false or to go along with what the girls are doing. The consequence for telling somebody would be having Anne name her family as witches. So she's battling with basically the lesser of two evils and she must make a choice as a young girl what to do. The book starts with Susanna about to confess what went on during those years. It's set about 14 years after the event started and then the story follows as a flashback from 1692 up until 1706 when she's going to confess that she was part of the false accusations. I think these books are really what kicked off my love of historical fiction. I remember my aunt getting me a lot of really good books at that time and these ones really have stuck with me over the years. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna end up rereading these again this year too, and now this is going to become another books I want to reread in 2018 series. Awesome. The next book I have is Angus Thongs and Full Frontal Snogging by Louise Renison. This is the first book in the Confessions of Georgia Nicholson series. I only have the first seven. I want to finish off the series. I think there's ten in all. I never got around to getting the last three. I don't really know why. I think this would be one of those ones again where if I read them now I would be shocked at how ridiculous it is. But I remember laughing out loud when I was reading these. I remember looking at them when I was younger and wanting to read them but being kind of afraid to get them because I didn't think my mom would let me read them because the one book is called On the Bright Side, I'm Now the Girlfriend of a Sex God. I think I was around 12 when I got my first one. Yeah, my mom would not have been happy about me reading a book about a girl whose boyfriend is a sex god. I wasn't even a teenager at that point. My god. Because she wouldn't let me read Gossip Girl. She flipped through a little bit and she wouldn't let me read it because some of the stuff that happened. So I just avoided that whole fiasco to begin with. And then when I read the books, they weren't anything like what I thought they were gonna be. They were actually pretty hilarious. George is kind of insane and I loved it. At the end of each book, there's a glossary of all the English slang that she uses so you can understand what the hell she's saying if you're not from England or any part of the UK really. This series basically just follows Georgia and the shenanigans that she gets up to on a daily basis. I think she's 14. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she's 14 or around that age and the story is told kind of through diary-like type entry things. I don't know what the hell I just said right there, but diary entry type things might make more sense, but I'm not entirely sure. Think kind of like Princess Diaries, but better. She's less annoying than Mia. <sighs> Anyways, where was I going with this? I lost my train of thought. It is snowing out and it's pretty. I feel like reading this again is going to put me back in the mindset of being a young teenager and how everything feels like it's the end of the world or the greatest thing that ever happened and there's really no happy medium. I don't know if I'm ready for that. I don't know. Like mentally, am I prepared? to become a 14 year old again but I mean like there's there's a cat with a tiara and a tutu on it. You can't not love a book with a cat on the cover. And her cat Angus is the size of a small Labrador. Honestly, he reminds me of Jackson. If anyone out there has seen Haley from Haley and Bookland's cat Jackson, they'll understand what I'm talking about. He's just the most precious little bean, but he's ginormous, which means there's more of him to love. Anyways, I digress again. Next book. Oh boy. Okay, the next book I have, I reread the series last year and I was shocked at how petty these girls were and very confused as to why I loved it so much, but still kind of understanding why I loved it so much. It's the first book in a very, very long series and that is The Click by Lisey Harrison. Oh God. This series follows five young girls, Massey, Alicia, Dylan, Kristen, and Claire. Claire's the new girl who comes to Westchester, New York, from Florida. I think she's from Kissimmee? Yeah, she's from Kissimmee, the Orlando region. She comes to live in Massey's guest house. Their dads were friends from college or something. She is just trying to fit into this New York type lifestyle that's very different from her down to earth Florida lifestyle. The four girls that make up the pretty committee, Massey, Alicia, Dylan, and Kristen, are absolutely 
horrid to poor Claire. They pour red paint on her white pants to make her think that she got her period. First of all, honey, you would know. That's gonna hurt a lot. That first cramping? No. It's not just red paint on white pants. You're gonna find out soon enough. And I feel for you when you do. Anyways, these girls are a horrible people. And they're like 12. Explain to me why you're going to school wearing three inch pumps and a mini skirt at 12 years old. My mother would have locked me up. She would have locked me up forever. Oh god. Oh my god. Okay. Nope. I can't think about that because I'm gonna start having nightmares about what she would do to me. Anyways, this series follows the girls from grade 7 to end of grade 8. Sorry, they're American. From 7th grade to the end of 8th grade. And it's just more shenanigans that preteens get up to thinking that they rule the entire world and that everything revolves around them. Oh god, that was an awful stage in life. I'm sorry to everyone that had to deal with me at 12 years old. I need to talk about the next book. Oh god. On a much more lighthearted note, the next book is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Ooh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl. I loved this book. I I love the movies. This story is just so wholesome. It's so good. It's wonderful. And it has illustrations in it. Can you see that? Yeah. It's got little illustrations and whatnot. Oh, it's fantastic. The illustrations scared me still. They scared me as a kid and they still scare me now. I remember reading this book in grade two. So I would have been, I would have been seven when I read this. It would have been not long after I turned seven because it's the beginning of grade two. It might have been six. If it was in September when we read this, I would have been six. Either way, I was six or seven when I read this, and I've honestly probably read it at least 10 times. I don't know how many times I've seen the movie adaptations, but I absolutely love this story. I feel like everybody knows what this story is about, so I'm gonna skip the synopsis and get on to the next one, because I need to find time to edit this before I post it this same day, because yes, it's Monday, and I've procrastinated once again. Whoop. The next book I have is The Magician's Nephew by C.S. Lewis. This is the first book to the Chronicles of Narnia series, which most people don't know. Most people think the first book is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and that is incorrect. This is the first book. The Chronicles of Narnia follows the world of Narnia, really, from creation to, what's the word after creation? Annihilation? Basically, pretty much the beginning of the world to the end of the world. Like the Armageddon. I don't know. Words are hard right now. This book, the real beginning of the Chronicles of Narnia, happens before Narnia is created. This book tells the events of how Narnia came to be and some other worlds that came before Narnia. This is the only book to not feature any of the Pevensies, Lucy, Peter, Edmund, and Susan, but it does feature Professor Kirk from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. He doesn't play a big part in that one, but he plays a huge part in the founding of Narnia in this book. I think I read this book around when I was eight as well. Yep, my aunt, the same one that that got me the Anne Rinaldi books was the one that got me the Chronicles of Narnia. She really changed my life. I gotta do something nice for her. Thanks, Maria. You really changed my reading life. Oh, I gotta be nice to her now. Oh, oh boy. Anyways, the Chronicles of Narnia is seven books. I reread it, I think last year, and I didn't understand any biblical references when I was a kid. My family wasn't religious at all. I didn't understand any of the references. I read the Bible for fun in high school. I went to a Catholic school and I was bored one day during religion, so I decided to read the Bible just for fun and rereading the series after that and after almost entirely completing a degree in English I understand a lot of these references now and it really changed my understanding of the story I don't know if I enjoyed it more as a kid where it was just a fun story or now where I understand where C.S. Lewis is coming from and I get all of his references They're both just really different experiences for me and I think I like them equally The next book I have is Bras and Broomsticks by Sarah Mlinowski this is the first book in the Magic in Manhattan series. I only have the first two books in that series. I want to finish it eventually. I have always been drawn to anything magical, anything with witches or wizards or warlocks and you got broomsticks, you got witches, I'm here for it. I loved this series and I love the take on magic. In this world, every bit of magic has a consequence. So for example, at one point in the story, the main character wanted a new TV, I think it was. So she had a catalog from an electronics store where she saw the TV that she wanted, she envisioned it, she did her little spell and a TV popped up. However, it didn't just pop up out of nowhere, it came from the store. So she basically stole the TV without 
without meaning to, and that was really the catalyst for her learning that her actions really do have consequences. This story follows a girl named Rachel who is royally pissed off at this point because her younger sister Miri is a witch and Rachel's not. Miri inherited the powers that Rachel was supposed to get and now Miri doesn't want to use her powers to help Rachel out with anything. But what Rachel wants them for is to learn some awesome dance moves to get her best friend back, to stop her father's wedding, and to snag a hot guy. Which at 14 seems like really important stuff, but her younger sister doesn't want any part of that. There's a slight chance that Rachel will get her witchy powers or that she'll be able to convince Miri to use her powers for Rachel's sole benefit. I don't really remember much about what actually happens in this book or the second one, Frogs and French Kisses. That was the only two that I have. I honestly don't really remember. I just remember loving them and thinking about them gives me a really good feeling. So I know I definitely want to finish the series. There really aren't any series that I have that I haven't finished that I don't want to finish, but I think I'm going to try and finish this one soon just to see if it's as good as I remember. I don't remember how old I was when I read this either. When did it come out? 2005. It came out in 2005, so I would have been 12. I probably read it when I was 12 or 13, so her problems would have been much more relatable than they are now, but I still want to give it a shot. The final book I have is Mr. Monday by Garth Nix. This is the first book in the Keys to the Kingdom series, and I thought it was the most genius thing when I was a kid. There are seven books in the series, and each one is named after a day of the week. So there's Mr. Monday, Grim Tuesday, Drowned Wednesday, you get the point. This story follows a guy named Arthur who was supposed to die, but his life was saved by a miniature key in the shape of uh, the hand of a clock, which sounds entirely bizarre, but it makes sense in this world. This key that saved his life is not from our world, and when it enters our world, it comes with these bizarre creatures, a guy named Mr. Monday, who is not a nice guy, and these weird things called fetchers who will stop at nothing to get this key back from Arthur. Along with all these things comes a giant house that only Arthur can see. It's not part of our world, it's from a different dimension, sort of, and only Arthur is able to see it, so he kind of thinks he's going crazy, naturally. What else is there to do when you see a giant house pop up that nobody else can see? You go in. Oh, to be a teenager again. Inside this house is the only place where he can unravel the secret of the key that saved his life, and these strange creatures and strange people, and really the secret of the house. I think I was around 10 when I read this one. Something like that. Around 10, maybe 11. I don't remember if I read this series first, or if I read Garth Nick his other series, The Old Kingdom. I mentioned that book in my books I want to reread in 2018 video. I might have to add this series to the list. I only own the first four of this series, so I definitely want to get the last three at some point soon so I can finish the series. I'll randomly start thinking about this one every few months or so, wondering what happens at the end, but I don't want to read it online and spoil it for myself, so I really need to get these books soon so I can stop thinking about it. But I'm kind of on a book buying ban right now. When that's over, I'll go get the rest. So those were 10 of my childhood favorites or 10 of the books that I have the best memories of reading as a kid and a young teenager. If any of you guys have any books that you have really fond memories of or were your childhood favorites as well, definitely feel free to leave those down below in the comments so we can see if we have anything in common. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads all at your book nerd Zoe to stay updated with my current reads. I have been getting better about posting daily updates. I'm currently reading Nevernight and I love it. I didn't expect the narrator to be so sarcastic and so funny. I've laughed out loud a couple times already, which I'm a big fan of. Anyways, I think that's all I had to say for today. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and get at least a little bit of uninterrupted reading time. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!